Welcome to America in Focus. I'm your guest host, Cole McNeely, filling in this week for Dan McCaleb. Manhattan jury on Thursday convicted former President Donald Trump on all counts in his hush money case, a historic making verdict that could reshape the 2024 presidential election. To talk about this unprecedented legal uh, case, ruling, decision, verdict, whatever you want to say, is the Center Square's investigative reporter, Brett Rowland. Uh, Brett, quite the uh, historic week we had here in terms of legal proceedings. Yes. Yeah, so a lot happened. Uh, starting yesterday, Trump was found guilty of 34 counts of falsifying business records related to the hush money payment to Stormy Daniels and another woman. And that has kicked off a chain of events that um, has sort of has has the power to threat uh, sort of shape where the election is going to go. It could affect polling and um, it, it certainly puts America in a spot where it's never been before. Um, so the first thing that that's up next for Trump is sentencing. Um, that's going to come on July 11th. But before then, uh, some key things will happen. The first is that prosecutors will get to submit their sentencing recommendation to the judge. Then the defense attorneys will also get to submit sentencing records or sentencing recommendations to the judge. And the a New York uh, probation department will submit a report as well. So the judge will factor those, take those things into factor when he considers a sentence. The crime is punishable by up to four years in prison, although it's somewhat unlikely that a 77 year old first time offender in a nonviolent crime would be sentenced to jail. It's still a possibility. The judge, Juan Merchant, has wide discretion in the courtroom. So he uh, can sort of go where he wants. There are some guidelines, but he's, he has a, a good amount of, of leeway uh, here to, to, and, and a lot of room to run with. So um, just what will happen remains to be seen, but that first step will come July 11th. In the meantime, Trump was out this morning with um, with, a, with a record fundraising announcement. He said that um, he raised $34.8 million after the guilty verdict, um, which he said was a record. Um, and he also uh, said this morning uh, at a news conference at Trump Tower that he planned to appeal uh, the verdict. Uh, that was likely all along, but um, he confirmed that this morning, and, and it's it's clear that there will be some sort of appeal. Now, that process will likely take a lot longer than um, he might hope. It certainly won't happen before the November 5th election. But um, that's that's the biggest news from this morning. Well, Brad, I'm going to take you back a minute there. You were discussing the potential for for jail time. Again, we had 34 felonies. He was found guilty on all 34. Correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, by the way, but 34 felonies. He's found guilty on all 34. And I would say what, what you said, right? 77 year old first time, you know, convicted felon, I guess. And I guess that's the word to use unlikely to have jail time, but it's at the discretion of the judge. And I, I don't think the former president was necessarily the model defendant in the courtroom. I, I mean, I, I don't know what his gag order um, number so topped out well, at, just, but I do wonder, I mean, does that, is that going to play a role here? Well, it certainly could. There's going to be a lot of different factors, um, but certainly the judge could factor in Trump's behavior in court, lack of remorse, um, and, uh, and sort of insistence that the trial was rigged or that the, uh, the system was rigged against him. Um, he could consider those in sentencing. Um, but, it, you know, there's also probably going to be mitigating factors here, too. There was a nonviolent offense, first time offender. New York uh, doesn't have a ton of room in its, its jails and prisons. And um, I think putting Trump in jail would be a bit of a spectacle and probably more of a cost and a pain than a lot of people realize, given the level of Secret Service protection he'll have uh, throughout the process. Yeah, no doubt. Unprecedented time, to say the least, uh, in terms of uh, the idea of how would Secret Service protection, in theory, even if it's unlikely, have to contemplate how to uh, protect someone while they are in jail. I have read some things where they said if it was confinement at his home, kind of house arrest type situation, that would be a much easier lift for the Secret Service. But at that point, we're just speculating based upon what could happen in July. So we'll move on from that. Uh, the other, obviously, as you mentioned, there is political 
fallout from this as well. Donald Trump is going out and trying to raise a lot of money and, and supposedly has raised a lot of money off of this. At the same time, you do have Republicans and Democrats alike coming out and speaking on this as a whole. I mean, what what is the political messaging from both sides coming out around this conviction? So um, Democrats are, um, I think, it, pleased to see that he was convicted. Um, but Republicans are, are following in line with Trump and saying that this, the system was rigged or that, you know, they were sort of out to get Trump and that he's being unfairly targeted. Um, so that those contours could change a little bit from the from the guilty verdict. But we've also seen some polling that tends to show that those people who supported Trump before this were, are likely to support him afterwards. And that um, I guess the big question would be for independents and people who are sort of on the fence. He may lose support in those groups. But um, it's unclear right now uh, just how how much of a effect this could have. So I'm guessing in the next couple of weeks, we'll see new polling and we might even have polling from the center square uh, on just what voters think about this. So that should give us a better read in a couple of weeks. Yeah. And beyond that, Brett, I mean, there, there are considerations of what does this mean? Yeah. Again, unprecedented. Do you have a major party presidential presumed nominee now facing 34 felony charges uh, convicted, not facing convicted on 34 felony charges? How does this impact the campaign? Uh, I've, I've seen things where, you know, if there were a circumstance where he would have, a, you know, probation officer or something like that it could create real, real logistical issues about traveling around the country to campaign. Uh, but to clarify, this does not keep him from running for president. Could it keep him from voting for himself as president? I guess that is the question. It could be. So in his home state of Florida, he could be uh, prevented from from voting uh, as a convicted felon. But um, we'll have to see how that shakes out. I think it's too early to tell. I think for uh, political politically wise, I think that um, the the real challenge is going to be the November 5th election. Um, So both Biden and Trump were sort of in agreement on that, that this is this guilty verdict is is what it is, but that the real challenge for America and the real sort of the final verdict will come come from voters on November 5th. And uh, Brett, I want to touch on this real quick. Obviously, we're focused on the Manhattan case right now. He has other legal issues that are still up in the air right now. Do you want to touch on those real quick before we wrap up? Yes. So he um, even after uh, the New York case is finished and it's not we're not quite there. We're, we're not we're not at sentencing yet. But he still faces um, a trial in Georgia um, over election interference. That case has been sidetracked by an appeal. But um, that's still pending. It's still out there in Florida. He faces federal charges of mishandling classified documents sharing them with people who weren't supposed to have them and then refusing to give them back to the government. Um, That case is proceeding, although not very quickly, in part because it uh, involves classified materials. And then last but not least, we have the federal charges in Washington, D.C., where, again, prosecutor Jack, uh, special counsel Jack Smith's team is um, prosecuting Trump at the federal level for interelection election election interference and, and the attack on the Capitol. And in the midst of all that, uh, President Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, also has a criminal trial going on. Nothing like an election year, and this is one like no other. Uh, Brett Rowland from the Center Square, thank you for joining us today on America in Focus. You can check out Brett's reporting at thecentersquare.com and all of the great reporting. Just click the national button. Thanks for listening to America in Focus. America in Focus.